we launched the Buy Local campaign, uh, grown, uh, grown right here, uh, there were a lot of displays um, in it, at that um, function showing that uh, bread could be made with cassava and other products could be made with cassava in significant amounts. So it's a question of, uh, of developing that. Uh, many of you also, and I want to congratulate Taba uh, this morning, and I think they deserve a tremendous round of applause, if you wouldn't mind, for, for being able to bring to the table uh, to coincide with our launch on Wednesday, uh, KFC, the international franchise, who are now selling um, sweet potato fries in, I think, five of their outlets. Am I correct? Six, six of their outlets to start off with. Six of their flagship stores to start off with. And uh, up to this morning, I was reading an article, I think it was on a Newsday, uh, where they were talking about consumer feedback. And the consumer feedback was excellent. So therefore, it is the start. We've gotten the, we've gotten the ball rolling. We've gotten, we've, we're providing the enabling environment. I've always said from day one that I don't believe that government as an entity should be involved directly in the agricultural sector. But what we must do is provide the enabling environment to ensure that we can, we can encourage our farmers and our entrepreneurs to become involved in the agricultural sector. The fifth area is, of course, the diversification of the economy and agriculture. Um, is being utilized and used as an engine of diversification as far as this government is concerned. We already have what's called plant on the ground. We already have the technical ability, the know-how. We have the geographical spread. There's absolutely no reason why we can't develop, that, that, that agriculture cannot be used as the engine to diversify away from oil and gas in the initial instance. So those were the mandates that we set ourselves at the beginning of the year. And I want to say that it, in large measure, we've accomplished almost everything we've set out to do 12 months ago. When I get up to speak in the budget on, uh, in September or October, whenever, the, whenever budget time is going to be, I've said from day one, I don't want to be in a position where I'm talking for the next 12 months about what we are going to do, my, or what I'm promising what we're going to do for the next 12 months. Yes, there's got to be some of that, but I want to be in a position to inform this nation and account to the people of Trinidad and Tobago and the taxpayers of Trinidad and Tobago of our achievements of this year. What have we accomplished? And I want to be able to say throughout my, my uh, presentation to the people of Trinidad and Tobago what each individual organization under the purview of the Ministry of Food Production, Land and Marine Affairs has achieved, that has fed into and created the success for the ministry. So I want to talk about EMBD. I want to talk about the Cocoa and Coffee Board. I want to talk about the Agricultural Development Bank and so on and so forth throughout the, my discussions. And I will be coming to all of you during the course of the next couple of months to ensure that your, um, your um, achievements feed in to my contribution to the debate. And the reason I have stressed on that is I think that it's important that we account to the people of Trinidad and Tobago for how we've spent their money. I think no longer, because of the high levels of expectations that people expect, I, no longer can we stand up and brazenly say, this is what we're going to do, and say it year after year without actually having delivered on our commitments and our promises. The population is a lot smarter, they're a lot wiser, and they are expecting a lot more from all of us, including not just the ministers of government like myself, but including all of you. So it is incumbent upon you as boards to ensure that you deliver on the promises that you actually make to the ministry. So when I stand up, at budget time, I'm going to talk about a, refi a revised incentive program. And I hope Yoland has some of those, um, the, the incentive programs that uh, were printed only this week. I hope they're, they're, they're here today for distribution. If, if not, Yoland, if you could uh, arrange to have them uh, sent up during the course of the day, because I'd like to have, make sure everyone has copies. But more importantly, I would, make, I would like to ensure that by next week, all of the agencies have incentive program booklets available at their offices so that 
members of the population can come in and, and, and collect them. Far too often in this ministry, and I'm, I suspect in many other ministries, a lot of work is done and it's essentially kept in the ministry and it's not disseminated so that people could actually utilize them. So they essentially what happens is they never get used for the purpose for which they were originally intended. And what we want to do is to ensure that you'll see that when you get the booklet, it's nothing big and flashy, but what it does is it serves the purpose for which it was intended. It's a very small little booklet, very uh, customer oriented in terms of user friendly, and uh, farmers who in most cases, as you all know, uh, many of them um, had never had the opportunity to go to school and so on, and so therefore it's printed in a manner that is easily, it's formatted in a manner that's easily readable. So I, when I get up in September, I will talk, or October, I will talk about the revised incentive program. I will talk about the agricultural access road program that the EMBD has been involved in, as well as the ministry. I will talk about our irrigation program that, uh, again, the EMBD has been involved in together with uh, the ministry, the 300 ponds that we would have put down, the installation of uh, the pumps on the banks of the, of the uh, Karani River. I will talk about the commissioning of the three large farms that uh, we would have com uh, completed by then. Many of you will know that we commissioned the Edinburgh farm last week, which will be involved in the production of sweet corn and uh, other items, uh, not competing with local, lo local growers. And the other two are going to be commissioned very shortly. The first one, the next one, uh, will be uh, 100 acres of um, of rice uh, as we as we start to redevelop the rice industry in Trinidad and Tobago. I will talk about the 3,000 acres of land that the, this ministry will be distributing and have available for distribution by the end of uh, August of this year. I will talk about the fish landing sites that the EMBD again has been involved in. Uh, across the country, the 16 fish landing sites that we will refurbish and redevelop. I will talk about the, um, the work that we're doing in the, in the citrus sector, uh, the, the work that we're doing in the cocoa sector. Of course, I will talk about the success that we've had with uh, KFC and continued success that we must have as we pull the market along and create that enabling environment for our farmers. And I will talk about youth in agriculture, and, and for those of you who may not have heard me say before, we have a program starting in September where we will be taking in 50 young graduates uh, in a new program um, for, a, for, for uh, training them in the agricultural sector, dispersing them into various areas of agro-processing, the large farms, the ministry, um, some of the agencies like yours, where we will put young graduates in uh, so that they're not lost to the industry. I wanted to just touch very briefly on the campaign we launched on Wednesday, which is essentially a buy local campaign, but coined it very um, slightly differently. I'm not seeing a. Do we have a Do we have a logo anywhere of uh, the campaign? Well, it's not it's not very visible. But what we have around strewn around the room are some corporate ads that we will be putting out in the newspaper. We have a. Uh, television ad also that I hope we have a copy of that we can show you today. Uh, 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 we have an ad that um, is that is um, geared towards preventing predilastny. Also, I think you will find that most amusing. But you will see if you, for those of you, you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of the ads, there's a logo that will be carried on everything that the ministry does, which is put TNT on your table. And essentially what we're attempting to do is to create a nationalistic call to all of our citizens that by putting Trinidad-grown food, Trinidad and Tobago-grown food on your table, you not only eat a healthier, more nutritious meal, but you actually assist in the development of the economy of Trinidad and Tobago, and therefore assist all of us. Because if we help the economy to grow, we help every, single, every citizen of Trinidad and Tobago to develop.